Okay, looks like we've got my screen output going there. Well, hello there, Nelson Cabrera. Hope I pronounced your name correctly. So yeah, we are right at the very beginning of stream, and what I planned on doing today was not quite exile. So around the year 2000, uh, computer technology was advancing a little bit, and Mac gaming was kind of falling off a little bit. And Jeff Vogel was still developing games, but also wanted his most popular games to still find an audience. So he remade Exile as Avernum. I think this also gave him a chance to refine a few details plot-wise for all three games and put in a more uniform set of mechanics, graphics, etc. Vernum gives us tips of the day. Actually, let me readjust my volume just a little bit. I actually had to move one of my Mac minis around because I don't really trust the older one to go online and do streaming anymore. So... Yeah, Avernum doesn't hit quite the same nostalgia buttons for me as Exile does. Uh, this game came out about when I was getting into middle school. Also, this is not a registered copy. This is the demo that is compatible with Mac OS 9. I actually do own full versions of all the Avernum games that run on Windows thanks to GOG.com. So let's just get into it, shall we? One major difference between Exile and Avernum is that Avernum limits you to four characters in your party instead of six. I feel like this is a bit of a downgrade, but it's not too bad, and I do appreciate the improved character graphics. Garnet, do you appreciate that too? Garnet appreciates having a warm lap to settle on. So as per usual, the game does supply you with a default uh, party build here. We've got the soldier, the rebel, the cleric, the sorcerer. And if you desire, you can customize it quite a bit. Soldiers received ec excellent military training on the surface, the best the Empire had to offer. They're very good with all sorts of weapons. Very good melee frontliners. Berserkers are wild swordsmen from the remote areas of the Empire. Their wildness tends to get them dumped into Avernum. They're extremely hardy, and their sword skill is unmatched. This would probably be my choice for a main, a main frontliner, particularly one that uses swords. Soldier, I think, has both sword and spear abilities. A cleric is a priest in one of the faiths disapproved of by the Empire. They have excellent healing and protective skills, although they often end up having to use them in Avernum. Definitely the best priest class. And sorcerer is the best mage class. They are practitioners of the wizardly arts. Their spells are powerful, both on offense and defense. Alas, because of their dangerous research and eccentricities, they tend to be sent down to Avernum. Rogues are nimble, good with swords, and able to handle locks and traps. They also tend to walk off with things they don't own. Unsurprisingly, the Empire loves to send them to Avernum. Archers were either hunters or trained members of the Empire Army, highly skilled with missile weapons. In the Empire Army, a dishonorable discharge tends to mean exile to Avernum. Also, going by my admittedly vague memories, archery is more useful in Avernum than it was in exile. Rebel. Some people dare to rebel against the Empire. They have to be good at everything if they want to survive, though they don't have the freedom to excel at one thing. A rebel tends to have some skill with weapons, traps, and lore, as opposed to being a straight warrior or 
rogue or what have you. Hedge wizards live in the remote villages of the Empire, where they help the locals with their magical skills. This sort of character is good at magery, has a little bit of training in priest spells, and has had a bit of practice in making potions. I don't honestly remember if Hedge Wizard gets both Mage and Priest spells, or just one of those. But I can always reset Philip back to a soldier if I want to, so yeah, let's see. Edit statistics. And I'm going to have to turn instant help off at some point, because that gets real annoying real fast. Okay, so Hedge Wizard gets Mage spells and Priest spells, and some lore, and some potion making, and some first aid. Pretty good balanced spellcaster, honestly. And because he started off as a soldier, Philip has Elite Warrior checked off. I'm of course not going to keep him as a hedge wizard. Shamans are the priests of the back hills. A shaman isn't quite as good at spells as a cleric, but makes up for it with weaponry and knowledge of herbs. Shamans are hardy folk, but their wildness tends to make them run afoul of the Empire. I did not mean to do that! <laughs> Fortunately, I can reset just by uh, hitting new game again. So yeah, soldier type has pretty good melee and pull weapon skills and some thrown weapons, etc. You may notice there's no difference anymore between swords and bashing weapons. In fact, bashing weapons have basically been removed from the game. Our only weapons are swords, spears, bows, thrown missiles like javelins. So I'm actually going to make Philip a berserker here. Focus in on the swords. And he still has some skill with other weapons because these have base values that are influenced by your core stats, strength, dex, intelligence, and endurance. Also, one thing I really like about the Avernum series is all of the skills get illustrations, courtesy of Phil Foglio. Yeah, I heard of EverQuest. I never got into that one. Granted, I didn't switch to PC until quite recently in life, actually. No, this is not Avernum Escape from the Pit. This is Old Vernum from the year 2000. Anyway, I've gone through the character classes, now I can go through all the other details. Strength, how much you can carry, how hard you hit. Dexterity, how fast you are on your feet, helps you act sooner in combat, hit more often, and be hit less often. Warriors and archers are good with that. Intelligence, how good you are at thinking things out and solving problems. Basically, how good you are at casting spells, and potentially resisting bad mental effects. Endurance, how hardy you are, how many hit points you get, and uh, some degree of resistance. Melee weapons, swords and stuff. Pole weapons, spears. Bows, arrowed. Thrown missiles, basically javelins and razor discs in the later games. Hardiness, acts like natural armor, has a chance of reducing damage from enemy weapons by one pretty good for frontline fighters. Also good for frontline fighters, defense skill helps you avoid the blows of your enemies. And assassination helps you hit even harder. Mage spells burninate your enemies. Priest spells heal your allies. Arcane lore measures how familiar you are with magical lore. You need this skill to decode magical inscriptions and spells. Potion making, used for making potions. I never really used much of this in game. Maybe some people do. Tool use, how good you are with picking locks and disarming traps. Cave lore, how much you know about finding your way through the wilderness. Helps avoid outdoor wandering monsters and navigate through difficult situations. First aid is a new concept introduced in this game. You can use the first aid skill to heal wounded characters. More skill gives more healing. If the skill is low, you may do harm. 
and the mysterious luck stat helps whenever something random happens around you, which is often. I don't know if this one saves you from uh, getting killed like in exile. There's also a bunch of traits you can select, advantages and disadvantages. Great Renown gives you a bit extra reputation. This one isn't really worthwhile because you can build up reputation by completing quests. Nimple Fingers can be good for a thief character. Beastmaster is okay early game. You can summon a beast once per day. Strong Will can be good for at least one character to have. You can have increased chance of resisting charm, confuse, and the like. Good Education. You are more likely to be able to handle situations which require lots of knowledge, such as decoding magical runes. So I think it's basically an invisible boost to arcane lore. Toughness. Your body is very resilient, your constitution is unusually strong, you are less likely to take damage, and disease and poison will have less effect. Fast on feet. I like this one. You are very fleet of foot, and your reaction time is among the best. You will act much more quickly in combat, and sometimes receive bonus action points. Natural Mage is really good for spellcasters to have. Elite Warrior is pretty good for melee fighters. You receive bonuses in combat, and bonuses increase as you gain levels. Divinely Touched is interesting. I never played around with it too much because it ha comes with a pretty hefty XP penalty. You have several special abilities, which each of which can be used once per day. And those will be small things like healing yourself, uh, summoning a beast, possibly doing a little healing on an ally. That's all the advantages. Disadvantages include Cursed at Birth. Through no fault of your own, you will sometimes receive penalties to your actions, and some magical effects will harm you more. Sickness prone. Disease, poison, and similar afflictions will have more of an effect on you. <laughs> this person looks like how I feel on a migraine day. Sluggish. This person looks like how I feel in the mornings. You are slow on your feet. Your reaction time is poor. Basically the opposite of fast on feet. Brittle bones. There is a tragic condition which causes all who suffer it to have very brittle bones. Unfortunately, you are counted among its victims. Going into melee, it's a very bad idea for you. The blows of enemies will be devastating. And I don't know why anyone would ever choose completely inept, except maybe for a challenge run. The adventuring life is completely bad match for you. When You freeze up when creatures attack you. A slightest chill causes you to catch cold. Enemy blows are devastating to you. You stumble a lot. Every day is a struggle just to keep moving. There are also some special skills that can come up later in the game. Also, I have unused skill points. I should do something with that. Here, have some luck. And some more cave lore. Okay, a berserker, a thief type, a cleric, a sorcerer. That's pretty good. You are never going to see sunlight again. You will never breathe fresh air, or be warm, or feel safe. That is your punishment. For your crimes, you are to be thrown into a magical portal and banished to a vernum, never to return. What was your crime? Not what you might think. Not murder, or arson, or crimes against other people. No. Your crime was against the Empire, ruled by the cruel Emperor Hawthorn. You spoke out against an unjust law, or you angered some politician, or you may just have been a misfit. Not being able to fit in is a crime in the Empire. Thus, you are being sent to Avernum. It is not a different land. After all, the Empire controls the entire surface of the world. All four continents have completely submitted to its rule. No. Avernum is a series of caverns, far below the surface of the world. It is a dark, subterranean prison. A place where exiles like yourselves spent the rest of their lives, far from the light. What is it like there? 
nobody on the surface knows. All they know is that it is dark and unpleasant, and that it is a place to be regarded only with fear. Some people believe that there is no air, warmth, or food, and death comes with merciful speed. Others believe that there is enough food to enable Avernites to endure a miserable, worm-like existence. Until, of course, the monsters get you. And a few believe that Avernum is a paradise, a subterranean land of pleasure and relief, and of freedom from the Empire's iron rule. People mad enough to believe Avernum is paradise soon end up there themselves. They don't really know what it's like. Nobody on the surface does. But soon, you will. There is no appeal to the judge's decision. Early one morning, in a low stone building far from any city, you are taken to the teleporter. You breathe clean, fresh air one last time. Then they throw you in. More instant help that I'm not going to read. Uh, preferences. Difficulty normal, game speed medium. Yes, special effects, yes, sounds. No tip of the day, no instant help. So, welcome to Fort Avernum. Instead of being called Exile, the caves are now called Avernum. Also, there's a calendar system, and time will pass. We are in the month of Radian, in the year 817 of uh, whatever calendar the Empire uses. Still stunned from your trip through the portal, you stumble down the rocky hill. As your vision clears, you look around at the world of Avernum for the first time. You are inside what looks like some sort of fort. It is made of huge blocks of stone, roughly mortared together. Wood must be rare down here. Only the doors are made of it. There are a few trees nearby. Strange things. More fungus than wood. It's not as cold as you thought it would be. In fact, it's very warm and moist, and the smell of sulfur hangs heavily in the air. There must be volcanic vents down here. Even though you're far, far underground, you can still see fairly well. The stone roof far above you is covered with a thick layer of glowing fungus, which bathes everything in a sickly greenish light. Thanks to this light, you can get a clear idea of your surroundings. In particular, you can see the small pale man waiting at the base of the hill. He seems to be here to greet you. Welcome to Avernum. See tour for supplies before you leave Fort Avernum. And in this game, the guards don't talk to you. Which is potentially a shame. We had some funny guard dialogue in the original Exile. But it also makes enough sense. And now I don't get to lampshade that all the guards have the exact same dialogue. Talking to Andrew. You meet a small man. He smiles at you nervously. His skin is incredibly pale in the strange light of the fungus. And instead of typing or clicking on keywords, I get dialogue options. Why are you standing here? I wait for new arrivals such as yourselves and welcome them. He bows. Welcome to Avernum. So we're in Avernum? What's Avernum? I'm pretty sure that people getting thrown into... People getting thrown into Avernum ought to have some idea of what Avernum is. But this is for new players. Avernum is what we call this place. In days of old, Avernum was the name of the underworld, where lost souls were sent to be punished. Sort of makes sense. He smiles sadly. And yeah, I think Avernum is one of the names of the underworld in Roman mythology? Avernum or Avernus or something similar. Avernum? What does that mean? In ancient times, Avernum was one of the names for the underworld. It was the place where souls were sent when their lives were over. Appropriate, yes? Why are you welcoming us? It's my job. I'm here to ease the considerable shock of being cast into the underworld, of course. So, welcome to the underworld. He pauses to think. Also, I'm here to say where you can get information about Avernum and supplies. Information is always useful. Where should I go? Theril is the town sage. He lives and works in the building just a little bit to the southwest. He's a bit glum, but he does his job well. He will answer your questions as best he can. Of course, you should get supplies first. 
Supplies. Someone will give us things. To prevent certain problems, new arrivals are sent to Tor to get modest supplies to support themselves until they find work. He's in the building to the south. We found doing otherwise results in desperate, dangerous, and violent new citizens. This way, you'll have a fair chance. What you do with it when you leave here is your business. Which reminds me, be sure to see Theral for information. And when we reach the end of a conversation thread, we can say good day, or I'm also curious about this. For instance, can I go back into the portal? I wouldn't recommend it. It's not a wise idea. Someone tried an experiment once. It was messy. Ask Acacia about it. She was there. Okay, I think we're done here. So, this game has a little corner here where we can see our characters and their inventories. I don't have a whole lot right now, although the Empire is at least kind enough, unlike Exile, to throw me in with basic clothing, pants, shoes, and very terrible weapons. Well, eh, stone short sword. That's not much better than a stone dagger. But also, if I hit the auto map button, I can have the map on screen right along with everything else. By the proclamation of King Micah, there is no anarchy here. Those who harm others will be banished to the abyss or slain. Not that that stops a bunch of bandits from running around anyway. As you start to leave the fort, one of the guards yells, Hold on there! Before you head out, you should find Tor and talk to him. He gives new arrivals like you a little money to help you get started, just so you know. This game does sometimes give get a little more hand-holdy than, than the older ones. Tor supplies. Newcomers get their starting equipment here. There is a tall man sitting behind the counter, wearing bronze armor. Behind him is a large rack of crude stone weapons. And who might you be? Well, sometimes I maintain the weapons of the guards, sometimes I guard travelers going to Silvar, but mostly I give supplies to newcomers. Do the weapons need lots of maintenance? He looks back at them with disdain. Pretty crude work, huh? Metal is rare down here. Tools to work at rarer still. And enchanted items? Good luck finding them. What is a Silvar? Silvar is the town to the west. You should ask Theral about it. His office is in the next building to the south. You can give me supplies. Tor nods, makes some notes on a scroll made of crude parchment, and hands you several pouches. This is the starting allowance all new arrivals are given to help them get established. We want you to become productive citizens of Avernum as soon as possible. Good luck to you. Thank you for your time. So we get 200 gold, and Philip gets a potion and a longsword. That, that's not what I wanted. Inventory. Okay, a bronze longsword is way better than a stone short sword. And we get a healing potion. Also, we don't have nearly as many unidentified items in these games, which is honestly kind of nice. So here's Theral. You see a slender, worried-looking man wearing impeccably pressed wizard's robes. He stands behind a book-laden desk. And what are you here for? He grimaces. I'm here to help you. Help us? Well, every day or so, our benevolent overlords above hurl a few more souls into this hellish cesspit. Then they come to me, and I tell them just how bad things are here. He chuckles dryly. Normally I'd be cheery, but today I'm just not in the mood. Anyway, I'm here to give information. Information? Yes, for example, on our lovely neighbors, the Nephilim and the Slitherikai. Or on nearby towns. Or on your chances for escape. Or on how you get supplies. Or on the local politics. The Nephilim you've heard of. There are many of them on the surface. But you've never heard of Slitherikai. Uh, what towns are nearby? Dovno is to the north. It's a farming community, ravaged by Nephilim raids. You'd have better luck at Silvar to the west. It's the largest settlement nearby. Help Dovno if you ever can. 
If it falls, this fort is next to go. Uh, who runs things down here? Each town has a mayor. The mayors form a council. The council co-rules with King Micah, lord of our homey little pit. Micah lives in the Great Cave. To get there, go away south and away west. By the way, the council meets in the castle. It's a place you should know about. It's our pride and joy. We built a real castle of rocks, crude magic, and spit. King Micah lives there, orchestrating our desperate defenses. You should see it. It's reasonably impressive. It's in the Great Cave to the southwest. And I have to click through the entire string again. Okay. Well, we did already get supplies from Tor. He'll give you some basic equipment so you aren't totally doomed. Chances of escape is no chance, none whatsoever. We all stay down here until monsters hunt us down like dogs. Delightful. And Slithazerikai are lizardmen. Only live below ground. Intelligent, powerful fighters. Very magically talented. We've been at war with them for years. And lately things have been at a stalemate. They live to the west. Alrighty. That door is locked and I have no lockpicks. Surface good storage. Unauthorized Avernites keep out. And more locked doors. So the layout of many of the areas in Avernum is a bit different than in Exile. We've got Pen and Ink and Papyrus Sheet. And they're not mine, so I'm not taking them. can also search in crates and barrels, and these don't have anything. You meet a middle-aged woman who seems to be in a big hurry. Like everyone else I've met, she is extremely pale. She's holding a crude clipboard. Greetings, what's the clipboard for? Also, her name is Janice. I'm in charge of supplies for the fort. The soldiers, they do their own cooking, but I'm the one they go to for the food. And weapons. And clothes. It's tedious work, but it keeps me busy as long as Theral is stationed out here. She sighs mightily. My husband, the sage. He helps the new arrivals get acclimated. Being out here depresses him terribly, being at the border and all. Yes, he's worried. About the Nephilim. He's convinced they'll storm the fort any day now. Who knows? He may be right. The doom of all of us if the Sliths don't get us first. Lots of them have been sent down here, along with the humans. Many migrate to lower caverns, but many more stay here, determined to take our land. A large tribe of... Bleh. A large tribe of them lives to the north. They don't arrive at Fort Avernum, by the way. They teleport in somewhere else. That bit, I think, might have been added in for Avernum. And that just leads back to Nephilim. Visitors' chambers, feel free to rest here. There are several comfortable, unused beds in this room. You could probably get a few hours of uninterrupted rest here if you want it. Well, we just got here, so I don't feel the need to take advantage of that. You find some empty quarters. You can leave one of your characters here for a while, if you want to travel with a smaller party. There are several character storage places in Avernum. You can pick up your stored character at any one of them later. So if I decide I'm bored of warriors, I don't want to have Philip around anymore, I could just stick him in there. And that is a new mechanic to Avernum. You could delete characters in exile, but you couldn't store them and pick them up later. And this is actually a sign. Avernum Memorial to the 94,000 souls who have been imprisoned here. The number has been sanded out and recarved many times. Talking to Diane. You see a shy, frail woman picking mushrooms. 
I'm Diane, Tor's wife. I cook mainly. I forgot that Tor had a different wife in Avernum slash Exile 1. In 2, he's... In 2 and 3, he's married to Carol. <laughs> well, a couple times a week, I cook meals for everyone here. I'm actually a very good musician, and I sing. But there's not much call for that around the fort. Oh well, we won't be here forever. She sings... Bleh. She sings a song for you, which you've never heard before. It is long and sad, about life in caves and missing the sun above. She has a beautiful voice. Ah yes, your arrival allotment. We all got it when we came down here. Otherwise, people who arrived in Avernum would be poor and desperate. Then they'd rob people and end up in the abyss. It's far to the west of here. It's where we send the criminals. Not everyone the Empire sends down is kind. Or sane. Those who can't live with us in peace are sent to the Abyss to live apart from us. And this is another new mechanic where I can agree with the person or take the contrarian option. That seems reasonable, or you banish them? Doesn't that make you as bad as the Empire? She frowns. That's a foolish thing to say. There is still such a thing as evil, and such a thing as justice. If you wish to live with the thugs and murderers, go to the Abyss. We won't stop you. Having said that, she calms down and returns to her mushrooms. Uh, sometimes I can come back to that point and give the different answer, I think. Fort Avernum Barracks. Just generic guards here. Cows. Can I talk to the cave cows? The beast looks up at you mutely. You match gazes with it, trying to achieve some sort of common ground. In the end, you feel personally enriched, but you learn nothing. Alas. Somewhat less entertaining than talking to livestock in exile. And we've got a couple interesting characters over here. Here's Acacia. You see a powerfully built woman. P powerfully built? Did I say that right? Yeah. That's the disadvantage of live streaming. When I stumble, I just have to roll with it. I can't do editing. You see a powerfully built woman, wearing chainmail with a strange insignia on it. Her reddish cheeks contrast strongly with the paleness of the rest of her skin. What is that design on your armor? You point out the insignia. It's a crude drawing of the portal you came through. This, it's our symbol, the seal of Avernum. It reminds us of where we came from, and where we hope to return to. Are you a soldier here? Yes. I'm the guard captain for the barracks here at Fort Avernum. We got a bunch of good men here, and when the Nephilim come for us, we'll give them a good run. We work best on defense. Why are the Nephilim attacking? They were thrown down here by the Empire, just like us, and they've always hated humans. We haven't attacked anybody. We just... We just want some caves to call our own. Not good enough for our foes. They won't rest until every human is on their dinner plates. So we are defending this fort? Yeah, it's a tough job, but important. If the Nephilim take Fort Avernum, newly arriving humans fall into their hands. And then... She draws her thumb across her neck and makes a charming noise. I have little hope for peace, I'm afraid. And I think the only thing left to ask her is... Andrew told me that someone tried to use the portal to return to the surface. Yes, I was there. Someone tried to use one of those strange blue crystals to alter the portal. It was a mad idea, and it didn't work. We made the fool leave before he got us all killed. Who was that guy? Oh, I can't remember. He said he was going up to Formolo, though. They're welcome to him. People who trifle with unknown magics are dangerous to everyone around them. Uh, you said it that... You mentioned a strange blue crystal. What's that? When the first people arrived in Avernum, they found a few of these bizarre crystals. When you looked into them, they talked to you. 
Most of them are lost, but there are still a few around if you look hard. Some of them even teach interesting things. She shrugs. Or so I've heard. Cool. Those blue crystals and any references to them are new to this game. And this is a new character entirely, Warwick. You meet a young woman with long black hair. She is sitting at a table, eating a bowl of thin lizard soup. Her skin has not yet attained the paleness of one who has spent a lot of time in Avernum. You seem like a recent arrival. Why were you sent down here? She looks down at the table. I have already learned that it is a rude question to ask. People are sent to Avernum because their secrets are revealed. Once here, they want them to become secrets again. She turns away. Whoops. Fortunately, she chills out and lets us talk to her some more. Have you arrived recently? No, I've been here for weeks, asking people if they have heard of the one asking people if they have heard of the one who was sent down before me. Her name was Anastasia. She was sent here a few years ago, and I don't want to leave until I know where she is. Well, we haven't met anyone named Anastasia, because we haven't been outside the fort yet, but we'll remember the but we'll remember that you're looking for her. Thank you. I would appreciate that. Despondent, she turns back to her soup. Aw. You step out of Fort Avernum and get your first good look at your new home. You are at the east end of an enormous cavern, many miles across. In the dim, green light, you can look out through the mist and see a huge forest of the strange, fungal trees. A dark river flows by to the south, and to the west, you can dimly make out the lights of a town. Although you're far underground, it's not as quiet and peaceful as you thought it would be. Sounds echo well in this cavern. You can dimly make out the hisses of lizards, flowing water, and, unnervingly, the growls of distant humanoids. Your journey in Avernum is about to begin. But first, I'm going to circumnavigate the fort. Because Jeff will oftentimes hide little things like extra enemies or goodies in the corners. All right, cave rats, let's see what you got. Okay, and you are my priest character. And I can cast Bless on one character. Oh cool, one of the rats is already dead. I can also cast Smite for some more spell points. And the wizard can cast Haste, Slow, or Bolt of Fire. Yay, rats are dead. And someone threw out a perfectly good pair of boots. Sure where days were good times. And trash is just trash. Actually, does trash have a descriptor in this game? <laughs> this is simple refuse, blissfully free of any sort of value. Lovely. I, no, I want to put you back on the ground. Back on the ground. <laughs> That's right, hit that like button and subscribe and get all your friends to subscribe if you want more live streams. I've been thinking I'd like to do this for every time I hit another 100 subscribers. I'm way past 500 now, but it took a little time to figure out how to get the setup working again. This is a bottle of magical liquid, which can be drunk to receive a hopefully beneficial effect. The most common sorts of footwear in Avernum are sandals and boots, formed from tanned leather from the hides of lizards. The bigger the lizard, the tougher the shoe. When used, this item will create light for you. Considering how dark it is down here, light-producing items such as these are always in great demand. This is bread. Most food in Avernum is disgusting, bordering on the inedible. 
However, extreme hunger has an interesting way of making one less picky. Every time you rest, you use up one unit of food. So, somewhat interesting thing about the Avernum remakes is... We do not eat food on a regular basis, unlike Exile. Food is only used when resting, or you can select and use it in your inventory for healing. I think I've heard of Castle of the Winds, but man, I never played any of those games. Maybe I should look into them eventually. And this guy has stuff, and he did not make it very far out of Fort Avernum. I keep trying to call it Fort Exile, and that's not what it is anymore. Wooden Lord Shield is probably better than a buckler. A short sword is a stabbing weapon, usually a foot and a half to two feet long. Swords and spears are the two most popular classes of weapons in Avernum. I was about to say the two only classes of weapons, but no, there's melee weapons, which are swords and spears, and ranged weapons, which are bows and javelins. A buckler is a small light shield, usually worn strapped to a forearm. Some descriptions are funny, some are just informative. No matter how close to savagery the people of Avernum came, they never forgot the immense value and dignity inherent in a good pair of pants. As on the surface, it is traditional for practitioners of the magical arts to wear loose, flowing robes. It's not necessary for spellcasting, of course. It's just the fashion of the times. Granted, most mage characters cannot cast mage spells if they're wearing encumbering armor. So, robes are, are sort of required for mages-ish? And alas, I cannot get information on items that I have currently equipped. A dagger is a long knife, about a foot long, suitable for creating several large holes in whatever happens to be bothering you at the moment. Bottom of the line for cutting weapons. Okay, that is the map uh, not fully explored, but explored enough. Let us move out to the overworld! Dovno, 30 miles north, Silvar, 20 miles west. Don't hold us to any of these distances. How convenient. So yeah, it feels a bit less detailed in some ways than Exile. I do like that I can see a little bit more of the area around me and that we can see all four characters on the overworld map. And also, here is Silvar. And I'm not going to bother going back out the gate that way. Rations and supplies. There is a pale woman working behind the counter. She has the jitters. Well, you can buy rations. And I have some cows. Cows? Neat. Well, I tried to take care of the poor dears. I'd love to sell you some milk. She chuckles for no apparent reason. But whenever I'm out with them, I hear noises. How interesting. Noises, you say? Yes, out behind my shop. Clunking and stuff. Makes me nervous. That much is obvious. By the way, how did you get cows down here? Sometimes, the Empire is merciful and sends a few cows through the portal at Fort Avernum. Most of them die down here. A few have adapted, though. They're pale and sickly, but they survive on fungus. They're a good source of milk and meat. And I can say, I suppose you have to make do with what you can, or, How disgusting! You'll never catch me eating those mutants! Yeah, no, I'm gonna be nice this time. True enough. Most of the time, though, we just eat giant lizards. Even though the fungus the cows eat makes their milk and meat disgusting, they're still a luxury compared to lizard meat. And I can buy mushrooms, dried meat, or lizard haunch. And despite the different prices, the different foods have absolutely no difference in effect. 
Carol uses the natural ingredients of Avernum in creative ways. She even manages to make something edible. Sometimes. Oh yeah, Gene Forge. Gene Forge doesn't quite have the same graphic style as Avernum, but definitely similar isometrics. So I think this game was actually built on an engine that Jeff previously used for Nethergate, which I have not played, but I do want to at some point. And then he took the engine of Gene Forge and, uh, used it to make some of the later Avernum games. To mixed success, I would say. A man in nice, well-cut robes shuffles papers behind a desk. A fine cloth sash, only somewhat worn, crosses his chest. He seems pleased to see you. Greetings, what do you do here? You fancy-looking man? I am the mayor of this fine city, and a member of the Avernum Council. Keeps me busy. This town has a mayor? Yes, I settle the odd dispute. I order the troops. If and when we get attacked, I marshal the defenses. And I take care of the records. It's a lot of work. Where? Well, what about these records? In the room to the west. Go help you- Bleh. Go help yourself. Not very interesting, true, but necessary. I keep track of everybody I can find who comes to Avernum. Someday, people will want to know what happened down here. And when they do, my records will be here. What's the Avernum Council? Well, Avernum has six large cities, and this is one of them. The mayors of each form a council, which co-rules with King Micah. It works very well, actually, and I'm proud to be a member. Does the Empire know we have government down here? The Empire may control everyone and everything on the surface, but it knows precious little about what happens down here. Or if they know, apparently they don't care. We have our own laws, our own customs, and our own history. I... Okay, that was all. Oh yeah, the writing and dialogue in these games is excellent. Yaha! Scroll of Ice Lances. That is a rather good mage spell. That I don't think I actually have yet. And I keep forgetting that Rosalia is the cleric and not the mage, because this is the graphic I often used for my mages back in the day. Grant's boat works. I'm reasonably certain we can't afford a boat yet. You meet a burly man. He's wearing a belt covered with tools. His skin is incredibly pale. Almost translucent. I make boats. There's a big call for him in these caves. You can get one for not much gold. He shakes his head. Hope you do. The slits have been hell for my business. Anyway, if you want to purchase one, say so. They're on sale. 350 gold. Only 150 more than what I have. Do you know how much craftsmanship goes into every one of these boats? If you can't pay me, I can't give you one. Okay, so what about those slits you mentioned? There's droves of them to the west, on the other side of that huge lake, and they pretty much own it. People don't fish there anymore. Too risky. Of course, people also need boats to get to the Great Cave to the south. We didn't have slits on the surface. No, the slith Zerakai, as far as I know, only live down here. Not all of them are evil. I've heard that there's a settlement of them somewhere who get along with humans. Most of them, though, crave our flesh. They can swim a long time underwater. We, on the other hand, need boats like mine to get around. And I'm curious about this, if you don't mind me asking. Yes? Why is everyone's skin so pale? Because they haven't seen the sun since they got down here. He laughs and looks at the back of his hand. The lacework of red and blue veins can be seen clearly underneath the skin. If you were born, if you were born down here, far from the sun, you'd look like this too. Give it time. Soon you'll be pale enough. Yeah, I guess Exile, or Avernum, 
has been receiving people long enough that they get a few people born here, at least. And here's boats that I can't use. And also, there's another dead body over here. Over behind the ration shop. Hmm. Suspicious, perhaps. can explore outside the wall on this side. Not that there's much of anything to find. Hall of Training. Ignorance cured for a reasonable fee. Talking to Eric Scarhead. You see a big, scarred man. The reddish lines on his face stand out starkly against his fishy white skin. If you don't mind my asking, how did you get those horrible scars? I encountered some bandits while wandering the areas around Silvar. Be wary if you travel to the north. Bandits set traps for those such as you. So basically, any direction we travel, there be danger. I train people. Then they can go end up like me. How do I train? Come on in here and I'll work you over in our battle pit. You'll be in much better shape after a few rounds with me. Actually, what you do is you hit the train button, and if you have any skill points, which apparently I do on the characters whose extra points I did not spend, what sort of special things can you teach me? Well, there is one unusual thing I know how to do. I've always been exceptionally good at bartering. I can help you learn how to negotiate with anyone about anything, for a price. Interested? We can add the barter skill for 150 gold per point. That's another new thing to the Avernum series. Yeah, there's tons of nostalgia and content for old console games, but old Mac or PC or DOS, somewhat less so. Next time I go to my parents' house, I kind of want to see if they have any of those random shareware CDs lying around. Granted, I'd also have to make sure I hook up a CD drive to a computer, and I probably wouldn't be able to read anything on it. Ah, technology. Talking to Ephraim. Behind the counter is a very small man with a very big sword. Are you in charge of this smithy? Yes, you can buy or sell weapons here. Don't have much of a stock out here. Hard to get good metal, but we do our best. And I can buy and sell stuff. <laughs> oh, good lord, floppy disks. Yeah, when I was in high school, for some godforsaken reason, we had to submit uh, papers on floppy disks so they could be checked for plagiarism. We had two Mac computers at home. One of them had a floppy drive. The other one was the one I actually wrote stuff on because it was the better machine. It was such a pain in the ass to get stuff saved to floppy so I could turn it in. 90s and early 2000s were... An interesting time, to be sure. Oh yeah, dang, they make USB... anything. <laughs> in some ways, things have, in fact, gotten easier. Anyway, I could buy new weapons here. I don't really want to. I'm usually fine with just scavenging off the corpses of my enemies. Oh, I guess I can't actually ask you about your sword until I talk to your wife. It is much harder to sequence break in this engine. Uh. 
Behind the counter, there is a middle-aged woman wearing a huge steel breastplate. Also, she's named Anastasia. What do you sell here? I sell armor. You can buy some here if you have the cash, or sell some if you don't. You'll need it if you plan to travel around down here. Don't count on getting any iron or steel, though. Don't count on getting any iron or steel armor, though. Damn expensive. Hard to make down here. Leather's cheap, though. Bronze is okay. And magic? Forget it. Ephraim makes all the armor we sell. We have a few magic items. The mages down here, such as they are, have a really tough time making magic armor. Potions and scrolls, sure. But armor? Almost never. Ephraim is my husband. He makes weapons in the smithy next door. Ask him about Demon Slayer. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm so annoyed. I was so annoyed when laptops stopped coming with built-in seat disk drives. Now everything is downloadable on the cloud or whatever. Would like to sell some extra things. And I could buy armor, but again, I'm generally fine just scavenging. Last thing, I met someone named Warwick. She's looking for you. She's in Fort Avernum. We assume you're the Anastasia she's looking for. Really? My sister's down here? That's terrible. I was hoping she would be able to evade the cruel forces of the Empire. Thank you for letting me know. If you see her again, please tell her that I will go there and bring her here soon. If you see her again, please tell her that I will go there and bring her here as soon as possible. Have you been able to get to your sister yet? Not yet. It's difficult to find someone who can bring her here. But easy to justify why characters stay in exactly the same place. With so many bandits about, not that many caravans are going to Fort Avernum. Soon, though, we will be able to fetch her here. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind uh, everything going to Wi-Fi instead of Ethernet, but... Yeah, I got mad when Apple dropped their USB ports, and now everything's... Ah... <sighs> USB-C or Thunderbolt or Lightning or whatever, and there's only two of them on the new laptops. Grr, arg, old woman yells at Cloud. But also, now that we've talked to Anastasia, I can go right back to Fort Avernum. Talk to Warwick again. I think we found your Anastasia. She looks up. For the first time, you see her smile. Really? My sister is safe? Where? She's staying in Silvar. Really? Oh, thank you. She stands and embraces you. My sister and I were foolish enough to question the Empire slaying all the Nephilim in our province. We were sent down here, one after the other. I am poor, and there is little I can do for you. However, I will be sure to tell all I meet of the kind travelers who took pity on me in my time of need. Thank you again. Yay, we gained experience, and our reputation has just increased. And we have completed the first new side quest! So if I go to my in info screen, my reputation is neutral. So people basically don't know who I am yet. Oh yeah, that would require a lot of cooperation if you were somehow to have four people playing together. But yeah, imagine having an MMO in this universe. That could be cool. There's a small, peculiar park in the middle of this town. Several of the Avernum trees, half wood, half fungus, surround a small pond. There are neither lily pads nor ducks. There is, however, a lot of lichen, and tiny lizards frolic about. Strange, you hear someone humming nearby, but the sound doesn't seem to be coming from any of the townsfolk. Gosh, I wonder which of these statues could be different. You look and see. Living statue. 
You look closer at the statue. It's cleaner than the others, and a much nicer piece of craftsmanship to boot. Then it winks at you. Hey, you're a living statue. What are you doing here? I just stand here. Watch. Listen. It starts humming gently, unconcerned about your presence. And, uh, that's all I can get out of it right now. I cannot sequence break and tell it to divulge, because this engine does not work that way. <laughs> A brown statue, yes. Okay. Well, I could go investigate behind the shop there. But I can also go investigate the inn. Adventurers greatly needed. Inquire at the castle. <laughs> oh no, then then Navernum would be entirely ruled by geese. What a horrible state of affairs that would be. The barkeep the barkeep busily polishes the counter. He's tall and has a very ambitious beard. Hey, barkeep, any advice on how to stay alive in Avernum? That's a good question. A lot of people come through. A lot of people come through here asking for my advice. I just suggest trying to do down here what you did on the surface. As long as it isn't harmful to anyone else, of course. Did you run an inn on the surface? Yes. Unfortunately, unknown to me, several rebels were using my place as a base of operation. When the Empire found them, they died. Then, to play it safe, I was sent to Avernum. Not fair, but since when has the Empire been fair? Any jobs adventurers such as we could do? As a matter of fact, yes. I am very interested in finding a natural hot spring. If so, I could profitably expand my innkeeping operation. If you find a nice spring, let me know. I will pay you well. Where could I find such a thing? If I knew, I wouldn't have offered you money to find it, now would I? Fair point. <laughs> Characters like getting beat up by doors. <laughs> there are a few doors that are relatively easy to bash down. But most of them are not. So, Gary, what do you have on tap? I sell mushroom beer. One gold. You can also get a room for the night. Five gold. We have a nice room available. He polishes for a bit. I'd like a tall beer, please. Here you go. It's some sort of beer made of fermented fungus. Strangely, bizarrely, almost horrifyingly, it's good. And it gives me the drunk status effect. Hee hee hee. Can I get a thing that tells me oh, There's the help menu. Instructions and hints, inventory. Da, 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 da. Okay, yeah, I don't know exactly where it is, but I'm sure there's something that tells you what all of the status symbols are. This one is drunk. I'm pretty sure it's pretty similar to being cursed. <laughs> Everyone chug, yes. A uh, couple NPCs in here. Haha, -ha, this guard has a different sprite, so he will talk to me. You meet a man in battered armor. He seems to be drinking himself into a stupor. Aren't you a soldier? No, a mercenary. You fighting anyone right now? Yeah, everyone. Fighting the catheads, then the sliths, then the catheads, then the sliths. Hell, I've been beat up by everybody. I'm on vacation now. Go away. Okay then. This guy is a little more interesting. This is a young, well-built man. He is weighed down with two heavy leather bags. Greetings to you. Are you a traveler? Yes, I'm kind of a refugee. Refugee, what are you fleeing? Well, I was a farmhand at Fort Dovno. That's some 20 miles to the north. But then the Nephilim started coming south, and I decided to move to more hospitable territory. The Nephilim? We have those on the surface. They're down here too? Yes, party members, we've established that. Yeah, the catheads are starting trouble again. They're building some sort of a fort at the north end of this huge cave. 
It's small now, but nobody's doing anything about it. Soon it'll be big. Then watch out. You could find out a lot more. You could find out a lot more about it at Fort Dovno. Go east to Fort. Go east to Fort Avernum, then north. Just follow the roads. <laughs> But we can also ask if that means he's looking for work. Well, yes, in fact. I've always wanted to travel and see the world. I'm pretty strong from farm work, and I've hunted all my life. I'm really good with all sorts of missile weapons. What I don't want to choose is, well, I'd be careful. A hick like you will get torn up if, you're, if you try to travel around here, because we are so experts in this region. Would you like to join us? We could always use another adventurer. He thinks, and then he looks at you slyly. That would be all right, but I'll need some money to outfit myself properly. Undergold would do it. Fortunately, I have that much gold. This character would like to join your party and travel with you. He or she will be placed in the first unused slot in your group. Do you let this character join you? I would like to. Unfortunately, you don't have a free slot. You need to use the delete character command or place someone in storage. <laughs> well, this group doesn't actually need a fourth member, but I have another group that could. Githa the Rogue, Esme the Witch, and Magrat the Healer don't actually have a frontline melee dude. So they could use someone who's a good strong farmhand, if I can find him again. Come on, don't go in the armor shop before I even give you your money. You have taken a new character into your party. If you ever tire of having him or her around, you can use the delete a character action or put him in storage. And now we've got Jay in the party. And Jay is quite a bit tougher than the three girls here. I notice he is level three instead of level one. Also, he's got a couple points in barter and find herbs. And I love that image of the guy pulling up a giant radish. So find herbs will sometimes find potion making, will sometimes find potion making ingredients when wandering through the wilderness. You cannot train in this skill. You can just randomly get it apparently. Barter, how good you are at trading with shopkeepers. The more of the skill in your party, the more money you get when selling your items. Cool. So what does Jay have equipped? Jay does not have anything too great. So Githa, give him your good sword. Also, bonus internet points to anyone who gets the reference I'm making he with these three here. <laughs> Brilliant. Of course, Jay knows about fine, fine herbs. Now we just need to find his friend Silent Bob. Yeah, I... I did a few runs with one or two characters in Exile. I don't think I ever actually did that in Avernum for some reason. Okay. So I have talked to Anastasia on this file. I have not yet sold my extra stuff. Since I've got a higher level character to take the brunt of the damage for me. Oh, right, locked door. Huh. Well, that worked. And Avernum does use the same system for finding secret passages of just bash your face into the wall until it works. 
You see shapes ahead, lurking in the ever-present shadows. You try to back away unnoticed, but they smell you. They're Nephilim spies! The Nephilim were a common pest on the surface, until the Empire started to wipe them out. Most of them were killed, but some were dumped into Avernum. Now they're your problem. And they've got a shaman, and he's got haste. Let's see if I can do this thing. Githa, what do you have equipped again? Oh dear. So Githa can do absolutely nothing from this position. I might have gone in a bit over my head here. Okay, Magrat. Let's do some shielding. I should have moved Githa up. Right, right, I can... Sw swap positions with different characters when they haven't used all their action points. I can call beast, bind foe, slow haste. Four damage? Oh, that won't do. I think I'm going to have to haste Magrat. because I like it when my characters don't die. Also, when I was doing a test playthrough of this bit, for some reason I thought the Bless and Haste spells in Avernum would automatically target the entire party. Maybe that's just in the re-remakes. I don't remember if in Avernum Escape from the Pit spells start off targeting just one character or the entire party. It's been a couple years since I played through those. Time does keep marching on. Battle Rage! AKA Blessing. Okay. I can't do that in combat. Great! Oh, screw you and your multi-target spells. Because Esme is my mage character, of course. Fine, heal Jay again. Okay, what's my range on smite? Perfect. Damn it, Jay, you're level three. You should be hitting things better. If I summon a beast, can I choose where it shows up? I don't think I can. Githa, why don't you use a healing potion? Please do more damage. That was directed towards my party, not you. And McGrath is out of spell points and is almost entirely useless now. Here, give some bread to... wait, no. Give some bread to Esme, I guess. I can't actually use food as a healing item in this game, at least not in combat. Yeah. Avernum is a slightly different flavor of drank than some of the later games. Wait a second, who's... I never got the scroll of ice lances that would be so useful right now.
Well, crap. That was a terrible idea. <laughs> I caught one of you. I got two of you. I managed to get all three of you, but Gith is dead. That's not great. Not great. They do drop good loot, though. This guy does not have good loot. He's got pants and a shirt and steel arrows, which actually is sort of good. This item, as much as you, this item is much as you would expect. It's an ordinary shirt, noteworthy only in the intense roughness of the cloth made in Avernum. It will still keep you warm in the chillier areas. So I wonder if they have a particularly stringy fungus that they can weave into cloth. An arrow is the standard missile fired from a bow. They are tipped with sharp bits of stone or metal. In Avernum, usually more stone than metal. Okay. I am going to reload my game and get Jay back in the party and not die. Okay. So again, Githa's got the good equipment. And now I have to do this part again. Jessica, Groby, Lorian, and Amy. I do not actually recognize that set of names. Yeah, as a girl gamer, I used, uh... I enjoyed female protagonists and all-girl crews fairly often. So I've got the Scroll of Ice Lances. I could try going after the Nephilim again. I'm not entirely sure I want to right now. Let's try going north instead. Yeah, super easy to find Fort Dovno on the screen. What's a little less easy is finding the entrance to this grove of trees in isometric view. You see in the middle of this grove of twisted trees a huge group of gremlins. These strange maniacal creatures, maniacal, manacle, whichever the correct word would be, they are very rare on the surface. They are very cheery, but sometimes very volatile and dangerous. Strangely, this group doesn't seem happy at all. In fact, they seem downright suicidal. They lie around on their backs, shaking their heads and occasionally sobbing. You carefully step forward. Some of them approach and sniff you. They seem to be smelling for something. Soon they decide that you are completely uninteresting. Then they rush forward and unceremoniously kick you out of their grove. When you look back, you see that they've returned to their apathetic, mournful state. You must not have had anything to cheer them up. Now we don't have any good booze. I actually kind of would like to find a group of monsters I can win against, and I think I just did. A small group of goblins is camped at the base of the east wall. They watch you warily as you approach. There's not too many of them, and they aren't well armed. They also don't seem to want to fight. Well, leaving peacefully gives me no rewards. 
Oh. Ah, now I get the chance to attack again. Hey, Zach, good seeing you here. And somewhat different angle of attack. That is how you're supposed to do it. Uh, oh, I guess pausing is just a parry defense and not stand ready to attack. Smite time! Smite is weak when just starting out. Fortunately, so are goblins. Also, I'm starting to get the muscle memory back of hitting those particular key combinations of M, A, M, A, P, F in that, in that case. Hooray! All the enemies defeated. And unlike the more random item drops of Exile, the dro enemy drops in Avernum make quite a lot more sense for what they are. The goblins have dropped a bunch of stone knives, at least one iron dagger, leather helmets, sandals, a few copper coins, and another healing potion. That's nice. So I want to pick up items that I can sell for a bit more. Also the helmets. Do I want to pick up the sandals? Ooh, another iron dagger. Cool. Stone dagger is going to sell for like one gold. Hardly worth the wait. Hooray! Tiny bits of loot! Hooray! Head protection! Um, hooray! Game is not actually crashed! <laughs> a campfire. A group of people, probably human, camped here recently. Interesting. Instead of the special dots, areas of interest will usually be marked by little smudges of something or other different landscape terrain stuff. Aha! There's a lot of supplies stored here. There's some water and goods for barter, and nice javelins as well. Do you search through the sacks and take everything useful? Let me save first. Oh, apparently I don't get any bandits coming to get me. So I've got some steel javelins. That's actually rather nice. Does anyone have thrown weapon... Actually, Jay is quite good with thrown weapons, even better than with swords. Certainly he'll be better than Githa. I won't be keeping this going too much longer, but I'm not sure how I want to spec Githa beyond general thieving. The already moist and sulfurous tunnels of Avernum grow even more humid in this direction, you think you're approaching some sort of fumarole or other volcanically active location. Which is a hint that we didn't have in exile that this cave has lava in it. Bat cave, beware! Ooh, pizza and live streams is a good Friday night. Also, this area is dark. Let's have some light. I see a corpse and a few bats. 
You are at the mouth of a high-ceilinged cavern, filled with the reek of guano and the loud squeaking of a multitude of bats. Don't tell me bats are stronger than I remember. If they are, it's not by much. Oh, cool. He tried to run away, and I hit him. Also, turn order is decided as much by dexterity and a couple other factors than uh, party order here, so sometimes I get a little confused as to who's going in which order. Okay, please to stop killing Jay. Jay, please to start actually hitting things with your sword, come on. I hired you for a reason. Then again, bats are supposed to have really high evade because they're small and flying. Yeah, despite coming later, some of the sounds from Avernum are engraved in my memory too. A spear. Which would be cool if I had... Actually... Wait. No, Jay is not great with pole weapons compared to melee. Or bows. I expect nobody to be good with pole weapons. Maybe I'll let Githa take over for spears at some point. After all, she's used to handling things with long shafts. <laughs> Leather armor is de better than poor leather armor. Boots are better than sandals. Okay. Let's leave this particular pop stand. Oh, I think I remember that one. I just spotted... This little guy right here. You encounter a lone creature, lost and desperate. It's a reptilian humanoid, the size of an adult human, wielding a large two-tined spear. This must be one of the infamous and dangerous Slitherikai. It attacks you. <laughs> For unfortunately, it is a big, tough Slith. Fortunately, there's only one of them. So I can start stacking buffs and debuffs. And fireballs. Well, that didn't take too long. Ooh, and he drops an iron spear that's better than the stone one I just picked up. I didn't actually say where the names are from, I just uh, told people that they got internet bonus points if they got the reference. Githa, Magrat, and Esme are from the Discworld series of books by Terry Pratchett. Specifically, they are the Lonker Coven of Witches, from such books as Weird Sisters, Witches Abroad, Lords and Ladies. Yeah, in the Discworld canon... Githa is known as Nanny Og, and she is a wonderful gran grandmother and dirty old woman. 
Meanwhile, Esme is better known as Granny Weatherwax, and McGrath is basically just known as McGrath. Dove No Inn. You see a small, worried man in traveler's clothes. A holy symbol hangs prominently from his neck. Greetings, sir. May I ask what? May I ask why you wear that holy symbol? I bring the word to the flock. I once did so in Formolo, but now I am moving to safer ground. What can you tell us about Formolo? It's a city to the north. They've had troubles, though not as bad as down here. The worst thing that's happened so far is that some Nephilim spies stole the mayor's necklace. He laughs. Sounds trivial, I know, but it's supposed to have powerful magic. Still, the attacks were starting to increase. I'm glad I left. Where are you headed? I'm going to the Great Cave, where things are calmer. He looks worried for a moment. Or so I hear. You really don't know much about Avernum, do you? It's far to the south, and then west. It's the largest cavern in Avernum. It contains a number of cities and forts, and the castle, the capital of Avernum. You should try to see it, if you ever get the chance. Yeah, aside from some pretty tough bandits roaming around, the Great Cave actually is one of the safer areas. Ha. Huh. I was assistant priest in Formolo, but the raids got too much for me. I worked for Mother Claudette, a good, fine woman. Plus, she had the ear of the mayor. If you're ever there, mention my name to her. She'll help you get settled. As for me, I'm off. Okay. And how about this fella? He doesn't want to talk. Nor does that one. Though I remember Fort Dovno has the one archer who is really into chess, so I'll have to see if I can find him again. Behind the counter you see a blonde woman of medium build. She is busy to the point of frenzy. Also, her name is Alice, and she might be a reference to Alice's Restaurant? The song, or whatever? I'm not actually that familiar with it. I know it exists. One second. I sell food, drink, and room for the night. Drink is two, room is five. Let me know what you want. I can buy food here. It is the exact same selection as back in Silvar. It sustains life, but not happiness. I'll take a drink, please. Here you go. She gives each of you a tin cup with liquid inside. It's some sort of wine. Weak and unpleasant. But it's enough to get us drunk, apparently. I am slightly annoyed that every time I go shopping for something, it pulls up the inventory screen and I have to manually get, get my map back. Adventurers needed. Reply at the castle. High pay. No, I didn't want to do the door. I wanted to read the sign. Jason's Farming Supplies. A tall, peculiar-looking man dressed in leather sits by the counter. He has long hair and a broad smile. Why is farming in quotes on your sign? Well, I used to sell farming supplies. When there were farms. Then I, diver then I diversified. When there were... When there were farms? There are a lot of brigands... There's a lot of brigands in these parts. Not good, respectable thieves. Savages. They've been attacking the farms. There's one band of them in particular that I'd like to see dealt with. Perhaps I could help with this? I am, in theory, pretty good at the violence. Perhaps you could at that. Go straight north towards Formolo, and you may meet a group of bandits which has been extorting money from merchants passing by. Deal with them, and I will pay you handsomely. Well, if you do run into them, feel free to kill them. Then come back here and talk to me. They tend to lurk on the road between here and Formolo. And farming supplies include... Light sources, lockpicks, first aid kit, horn, which is useless in this game, dice, and a lamp. Horn. This can make a very loud noise, in case that sort of thing is needed. Spoilers, it is not. 
dice. Gambling is as popular in Avernum as on the surface. They're basically just a little flavor element. I will buy some lockpicks, though. And I... We don't actually equip lockpicks anymore, we just have them in our inventory. Yeah, it, it does take a bit more effort to mod your own character sprites into this game because instead of just having one or two sprites that get mirrored, you have different views of your characters, uh, different battle sprites, and even sprites for sitting down. Like, you can see Jason is sitting in the chair here. Also, I didn't get information on the lockpicks. This is a set of metal hooks and wires, used to open locks for which you lack the key. Spears are one of the two main classes of weapons used in Avernum, the other being swords. A spear is a small, sharp blade of metal, attached to the end of a long, thin piece of wood. Good for when you want to kill an enemy way over there. Spears are small and light enough to be used with a shield. Oh, I forgot about that bit. They have bigger pull weapons that do require two hands to use. A small, slender woman sits behind the counter, working on fletching an arrow. Years in the underworld have made her skin white to the point of translucence. I make and sell archery supplies and javelins. Let me know if you want to purchase something. My stock is kind of low. Most everything I make has been going to the soldiers. This seems like a very violent area. It is. Sometimes I wish that my business was a bit less good. So here we can buy javelins, a cave wood bow, arrows, and bolts. Steel arrows are good, but they are expensive. And here's Walner the Sage. What sort of profession requires so much traveling? Well, I try to be a sage, but lately I've been seeing a lot of action. He looks down at his robes apologetically. Sounds exciting. What sort of action were you in? Captain Johnson enlisted me to help out against the foe. I was on a raid against the bandit fort up the hill to the west. It was a mess, but we fared much better than the group that attacked the Nephilim to the north. None of them returned. He looks at you hopefully. You know, we can always use more help. So what can a sage do in this game? Well, my specialty is item lore. I can identify your items, if you like. But I've also come across some interesting alchemy information. I know some valuable and simple recipes. Well, I don't have any unidentified items right now. In th this Avernum trilogy, I think the only times you find unidentified items are when they're explicitly magical. And it kind of makes sense that you'd be able to tell generally what the everyday items you find are but not be able to know exactly what an enchantment is. Anyway, if I was so inclined, I could buy recipes for hasting or energy potions. For description, press one of the... I am pressing one of the info buttons. Oh, you mean go here and look at the potions. Apparently, I have ability to make healing and curing potions already. Healing... Healing Potion cures a reasonable, though not great, amount of damage. Has a sweet, lemony flavor. A Curing Potion is a soothing, gentle libation that greatly alleviates the effects of poison and disease. Minimal side effects. Hasting is a powerful liquid that doubles your speed. Tastes bitter and strong. Just like coffee! Energy Potions. This potion increases your reserves of spell energy. Tastes like old fungus. Burns going down. Strength Potion. Drink this in combat and watch your muscles swell and your skin grow stiff and hard. Your attacks will be more powerful and blades will seem to slide off you. And the legendary Grey Mold Salve, which only needs five skill to make, apparently. Made from Grey Mold, one of the rarest potion ingredients. This salve can cure practically any nasty affliction, from poison to acid, rare and greatly in demand. And Balm of Life 
is useless by itself, it enables you to cast the spell Raise Dead, which miraculously enables you to restore life to a fallen comrade. And then there's Elixirs, which are stronger versions of the potions up here. And the Mighty Brews, which we are certainly not going to get any in this session. Restoration Brew heals all damage and removes practically all damaging conditions. Nice. Protection Brew shields the user from all damage for a short period of time. And Heroic Brew turns its imbiber into an amazing fighting machine. Drink it quickly, the taste is disgusting beyond human comprehension. So I'm not going to indulge in any alchemy today. You've got a fish. I'm not going to take it, but just noticing, there is a fish. I like the little details like that. You see an old man sitting under a tree. He's fishing. Excuse me, what do you do when you're not fishing? Well, not much. I used to be a farmer. Now I just do odd jobs. And fish. How's the fishing? Surprisingly good. The cave fish are pale and strange looking, but they make great eating. Why'd you stop farming? He speaks loudly for the first time, in anger. Those cat bastards. They burned my farm. They wanted the land, so they took it. Johnson sent out a group to attack their new fort, but they were never heard from. So I'm stuck here. He calms down and goes back to fishing. This, build this building is Grimmett's Smithy. Okay, so for some reason, looking at the open door closes it. That makes sense. Nice shop, what do you deal in? He is the blacksmith, repairs weapons, can buy stuff, and sell spares. He just does small repairs. Bautel up in Fort Draco can do some very impressive repairs. Indeed he can. Raids are mainly coming from bandits, with the Nephilim taking up the slack. There used to be a lot of farms to the north. Used to be. Now we're the only fort in the area. We could always use the help. Talk to Captain Johnson in the guardhouse across the street. I'd like to sell off some of my excess gear. buy anything. Jay and Githa have pretty decent weapons, even if they're not great at using them. Could maybe go for a wooden small shield to block more damage. Oh, yeah, I can't uh, equip items while I'm shopping. Here is Carol the Healer. Difficult but necessary job. And since we can't ask people their names, they're just automatically provided, Carol does not tell us in this game that she belongs to the Hamer clan. Unless it's on the sign? Also, I have yet to notice the archer dude wandering around. Assuming he's here. Oh, this guy's an archer. And he won't talk to me. But Captain Johnson certainly will. You see a large bearded man in gleaming steel armor. An iron halberd is strapped over his back. 
Clearly, he must be the captain of this fort. Fortunately, he looks glad to see you. How can I assist you, Captain? I could use some help protecting this fort from the bandits and Nephilim. It's my job to not rest until all the vermin are dead. But you have all these soldiers. What can I do? Our soldiers are the best, but we can always use some mercenaries, too. The bandits are off balance now, and we can really use help against the Nephilim. He practically spits out the last word. There's a weird gleam in his eye. Tell me more about the Nephilim problem. His face twists in a very disturbing way. Vicious vermin. I'd love to strangle every one. They're building a new fort to the north, and I sent a small group to check it out. They killed them all. We need to nail that fort while it's small. He grins. Of course, we're getting them back. We got two of them in the cells. Dying slow. So I can say, Nephil prisoners, you're treating them fairly, I hope. Or, Nephil prisoners, I hope you kill them. I can't stand those feline savages. Guess which one Captain Johnson will, uh, actually like. Not that one. <laughs> you must be newcomers. Only people who just arrived would say something so foolish. When you've lost friends and loved ones to those savages, then you come back and tell me about fairness. But he'll still accept our help with the Nephilim problem. All right, then. The new Nephil fort is to the north. It's being dug out by goblins right now. If you can kill their commander, come back here and talk to me, and I'll reward you well. Uh, what about the bandits? I'm not too worried about them. They live in the fort to the west. They destroyed several farms, but we're wearing them down. I'm always up for some more glory. Can I help you? Definitely. The bandits have overrun a ruined fort to the west. They're led by a powerful mage. If that mage was gone, we'd have a much easier time dealing with them. Kill the magician, and you'll be well rewarded. I didn't think you would yet, to be honest. It's probably too tough a mission for a bunch of wanderers like you. But if you can manage it, we'd appreciate it. Oh yeah, do these characters get... Hmm. I don't think they necessarily get new dialogues the second time I talk to them in this game. I'm pretty sure they do in the re-remake of Earnham Escape from the Pit. Oh yeah, already had the map open. So there's one living Nephilim and one that is dead. And I'm pretty sure if I get in to examine the body of the dead Nephilim, there's nothing on it. It's just very pathetic. Yeah, Jeff did implement a couple new things in Avernum 2. Avernum 2 and 3 are just a little more polished than the first Avernum. You see a Nephil. His fur is matted and greasy, and he's clearly starving. A long gash on his leg festers untended. I wait here to die, human, and I will be avenged. He makes a weak, growling noise. My tribe will have your captain dead, and all of you as well. You will all die. Vengeance for your attacks on us. His voice is fading. Now go. I have said all I will to you. Leave me to die. Of course, he will manage to stay alive for the rest of the game, for the same reason that Warwick spends the rest of the game in Fort Avernum. <laughs> you may set different quest flags, but NPCs don't really change. I hadn't actually finished that side quest on this file. Hooray! Ah, uh, no, I don't want to visit the gremlins again. I'm getting pretty close to wanting to wrap up this session. It's been nearly two hours. You find the ruins of what was once some sort of farm or homestead. It is now a burned-out shell, clearly the victim of some sort of attack. Alas. Hmm. I spy a group of bandits. 
I don't know if this is the one that I'm specifically hunt to- that I've specifically been sent to hunt down. A group of Avernum troops operating out of Fort Dovno approaches you. When they see that you aren't bandits, they warn you to be careful. There are bandits and crazed Nephilim in this area, the captain says. Then they depart. Okay, so there's... They are not bandits, they are Avernum soldiers. Okay. I thought that sprite was bandits. You see a homestead by a small lake. Smoke is rising from it. From here, you can't tell if the smoke is coming from a bonfire or a house fire. You approach the farm and find a ruin. What's more, it's been a ruin for some time. The smoke came from some sort of bonfire. You turn to leave and see bandits approaching. Apparently they've been using it as a camp. Yeah, bandits and soldiers get the exact same sprites. Slightly confusing. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> no, I can't keep going that long. I'm almost out of tea. Uh, again, I might be slightly outclassed here. I hope not. Let's try to even the odds, at least. Ooh, yeah, blessing is good. <laughs> Not cinnamon tea tonight. Uh, my regular oolong. Uh, should I slow? Should I haste? Actually, let's call a beast while that's still going to be remotely useful. I have summoned a nephil. I am almost dead. Healing potion. And shielding. And could slow more enemies. And my Nephil ally is dead. Yeah, Call Beast is good for meat shields. It can be. Ooh, I was about to say I really wish I had a multi-target spell, but I do, even if I only have one charge of it. Behold, Ice Lances. Nice. And because I used an item, I get to go again. Magic! Yes. And bandits drop slightly better loot than go goblins do. Ooh, silver coins. And, ooh, Ashbow is actually pretty decent. I don't remember if anyone even has archery skill right now, but my thief character is going to have higher base dexterity anyway. Armor, I remember wanting to collect more often for selling, particularly if it's decent leather armor. Ooh, iron short sword. There'd be some goodies here. Let's just pick up as much as I can carry, why not? You enter and search the house, afraid of what you might find. Fortunately, there's no signs of violence inside. The owners of the house must have fled before the bandits arrived. Huzzah. Now, I may not need to eat food regularly, and walking around outside is very fast regeneration. 
Are you the bandits? You might be the bandits. You are the bandits. You encounter a band of roving brigands. They seem to have decided you're an easy target. Their leader hails you. Hold on a moment there. These are our caves. If you want to pass, you must give us five gold. If you do not, rest assured we will act in an immediate and violent way. Hmm. I'm probably safer right now paying them. But I've also got a side quest to take you out. Okay, a bunch of brigands, two giant lizards, at least there's no archers. Let's shoot a missile. That was a slower animation than usual. Oh no, Githa is garbage with it. bow and arrow. I really should give the bow and arrow to Jay. Especially since 17 arrows is a lot more than two javelins. Even though they probably do less damage per hit. Yeah, we're hasting Magrat because she's got some work to do. I can't change up my armor mid-battle, but I can change up my weapons. Okay, F is the missile button in this one. Might actually survive this. Go, go! Bat summon! I was hoping that using missiles would let me take more actions per turn, but no. Ooh, bat killed a lizard. Very nice. Okay. Nobody's in immediate danger of dying, I think. Really wish I had multi-target spell, but I'm doing okay. Except for the part where McGrath's almost dead of spell points. <laughs> I am liking you a lot better than I liked the Neffel on the previous battle. Oh, you're trying to run! Not anymore, you're not. There we go. 
See, archery is actually quite good in this game, especially if you get a character who somehow has lots and lots of points in it. Ooh, iron studded, very nice. Jay has the most room in his inventory by kind of a lot. Okay, let's see if the person who dropped the iron armor has any other good stuff. Stone wood, meh. Iron buckler's okay. Yeah, the armor's really the good thing on this one. When you have limited inventory space, it is good to prioritize the valuable stuff. You have defeated the bandits. You don't find any loot on them. You must have been their first intended victims of the day. Fort Dovno will be very grateful for your help. Hooray! Anyway. I don't need to eat food regularly, but when I rest... I will use up one of the units here. See, my bread just disappeared. So you do need food in this game, kind of. You encounter a stray, lost group of cave cows. They must have wandered away from a nearby farm. You try to round them up, in the hopes of gaining a reward, but they're surprisingly nimble and stubborn. Eventually they escape. Yeah, you can't ever do anything with those cows. Right, I don't need to identify anything, so I can just do all my business with Jason. Wasn't it him who told me to kill the bandits? Yeah, unfortunately, one of the things that didn't get implemented until Avernum 2 was the quest log. <laughs> Aha, here we go. I found the bandits he told us about. They won't be troubling you anymore. Ah yes, I've heard already of your glorious triumph over that band of murderers. Somehow. He gives you a golden bracelet. This is not magical, alas. Magic is rare down here. However, you will be able to get a good price for it. Okay. Actually, can I sell things to you? I thought I could sell things to you. Yeah, I can totally just sell things back to you. And eventually I should go through and update some of my inventory stuff. Two iron short swords. Good leather armor. More short swords. Okay. Well, I've shown off a fair bit of the game, and I am getting a little tired, so I think I need to wrap it up here. But... Yeah, if you're watching this not so live, definitely let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you'd like to see more Avernums. I don't have any plans to do full Let's Plays of any of the Avernum remakes anytime soon. I don't know if I did, if I would prefer to do the old Vernum trilogy from the early 2000s, or the re-remakes from like 2013-2014. So tell me if you like one better than the other and why. <sighs> and I'd love to do another of these once I hit 600 subscribers, so tell your friends. If you hated it, tell your enemies.
<laughs> oh yeah, scenario editor. Blades of Exile, I will get to that one eventually. Uh, definitely going to focus on finishing up Exile 3, first of all. Yeah, I can see the re-remakes being a little more playable. They've got a bit more content. I don't... I tend to like the graphical style and... Uh... Hmm. No, honestly, I like the sound design of both. The graphics are a little bit more charming in a Vernum, old Vernum, but they're still pretty good in the remakes. The main thing I don't like about the re-remakes is they really streamlined the character building system to the point where you just can't do as much with it. It's less fun. It's very basic. But I do like uh, most of the extra content that gets worked into there. Yeah, every game has differently balanced mechanics, and... They're all a mix of stuff we like and stuff we don't like as much. Sometimes we like the more crunchy textures. Anyway. Have a good night and good weekend, everybody. I will see you later.